Howdy guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna go, or tonight we're gonna go over uh, Romans 19 through probably 23. Um, sorry that I'm making these videos in such short increments of verses for Romans 9, but it's it's a lot to cover because you gotta go through all these biblical places, all these other cross references to understand it better. And so, if you hopefully you've watched my last video about when it uh, the Pharaoh and uh, and uh, the video on why God uh, rose Pharaoh up to be the leader of Egypt and all the things that took place with that. And I want you to ask yourself with well, these next few verses, because Paul just spoke about Pharaoh, so he's drawing a comparison between Pharaoh being risen up and what happened with him, God's judgment on that nation and what is going on with Israel of Paul's day. Okay, so God raised the leader of Egypt up to show his power. How would this apply to Israel during Paul's day? Why did the nation of Israel reject Jesus? And what is God using this for? Remember, this is mostly about national judgments, okay? Nations here. Not individuals, but nations being judged. Because he's trying to draw a comparison between the Egyptian judgment to the Israel judgment. Okay? Or the coming of Israel judgment. So let's start at uh, Romans 9, uh, 9, 19. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Okay? Paul is making the point that if God chooses to have mercy on those or wrath on those, that is his business. We cannot resist God's will. Okay? Or God's plan. Remember, Paul is an uh, apostle to the Gentiles. And God, if he wants to use Israel's apostasy from rejecting, because Israel rejected Jesus, as a means to bring mercy upon all mankind, that is his prerogative to do so. Israel can't sit back and say, but we're the chosen ones, we're the chosen people. Why are the Gentiles receiving mercy and we aren't? Why are the believers receiving mercy and the disbelievers not? Okay? So, verse 20. Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, why hast thou made me thus? Have not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Now this is where we get interesting. Now if you're a Jew and you hear this, you immediately are going to think back to the Old Testament. You're going to think back to the, the uh, prophet of Jeremiah, and this is right up before the uh, Babylon, uh, the judgment from Babylon, where uh, uh, the armies of Babylon come and capture and uh, destroy Jerusalem and all of Judah and ship everybody and scatter the Israelites, okay, or the Judeans. Now let's listen to what Paul is uh, drawing from in the Old Testament. Let's listen and see what it says. Now this is Jeremiah 18. We're going to go through one through eight, verse 18. Jeremiah 18. And the word came, which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise, go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my word. So this, God's going to speak to Jeremiah at this potter's house. Okay? Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. See, this is talking about the nation of Israel. And I will um, now I want y'all to listen very carefully to what's going on. What it says in verse 7, At what instant uh, I shall speak concerning a nation, 
and concerning a kingdom, to pluck it up and to pull it down and to destroy it. Now think of what's going on in Paul's day. What is coming, going to happen to Israel in the next like decade or so? Okay, if that nation, again, okay, look, verse 8, now listen carefully. If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. And as to what instance I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it, if it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I have said I would benefit it. Now did you catch it? If the nation turns from their evil, God will repent of the evil, the judgment coming to them. He will make the vessel something else. Now what you got to understand is, we are all vessels of wrath. From the moment we're born, we're vessels of wrath because we all inherited the sin that came from Adam. So we are born all vessels of wrath. But God is saying that if you turn to Him, if you repent of your ways and turn to Him and have faith in Jesus, have faith in the Messiah, is what Paul's pointing to here, God will make you a new vessel. Now what is the... So the conditions on what the vessel is going to become is based on what the vessel does itself. If the vessel repents, the vessel will be remade. If it does not repent, then the vessel will be a vessel of wrath. Now remember, this is about Israel here. He's talking, he's drawing from the Old Testament and he's concerning Israel of his day. Israel is, has just crucified Jesus. Israel is, the leaders of Israel have rejected their Messiah, rejected God. And so, uh, Paul's hoping to draw them back by emulation. He's trying to show them, hey, remember back there in Jeremiah's day when God told you about the potter. You don't have to be a vessel of wrath. You can turn back to God and be saved. You can turn back and be made a new creation. Okay, now, let's continue in Jeremiah. Let's see here. In verse 11, now this is the answer the Judeans give to Jeremiah in during this time, the time before. Now therefore go to speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you, and devise a device against you. Return ye now every one from his evil way, and make your ways and your doings good. So God's pleading with Israel. You are going to be judged. You are now a vessel of wrath. But if you will turn from your evil and come back to me, I will repent of what I was going to do. I will not bring wrath upon you. And that wrath is coming in the Babylonians. Now listen to verse 12, what they say. And they said, there is no hope. We will walk after our own devices. We will every one, we will every one do the imagination of his evil heart. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Ask ye now among the heathen who hath heard such things. The virgin of Israel hath done a very horrible thing. Will a man leave the snow of Lebanon, which cometh after the cometh from the rock? I'm going to skip down to verse 18. Uh, then that said they, Come, and let us devise devices against Jeremiah. And Je uh, I'm sorry, I should have started at verse 17. Uh, this is God speaking. I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy, and I will show them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. And then it says, Then the Jews said, Come, let us devise devices against Jeremiah. So God speaking through Jeremiah saying, if Since you're not going to repent, I'm going to bring judgment upon you and scatter you across. I'm going to scatter you out of this nation. And... They instead, instead of heeding their call from God, they decide to try to kill Jeremiah or to hurt him or attack him. So, think back to what Paul's doing, talking to in Romans here. He's 
the apostle to the Gentiles. The Jews are persecuting Christians. They're not listening to the apostle. They're saying, repent, repent. The judgment is coming if you don't return back to God. And so Paul's drawing from the Old Testament where the Jews did not repent. And instead of be, turning to God to be made a new vessel, they chose to do evil and the wrath and, and remained a vessel of wrath. Now, I want to jump to uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 because this pertains to us, believers. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Uh... Let me see here. Did I do this right? Uh, it might not be 5-7. I may have got that mixed up. But it's in uh, 2 Corinthians where it says, We are a new creation. Those in Christ are a new creation. I can't remember the exact verse. I may have wrote it down wrong. Let's see here. I must have wrote it down wrong. My apologies, guys. Um, but you can just Google the verse. I'm sorry about that. It's uh, for those that are in Christ are a new creation. In other words, those that put their faith in Jesus are no longer vessels of wrath because our wrath was judged on the cross. Our wrath we deserve was judged then. We are now vessels of honor because we are a part of Christ. So... So let's go back and continue uh, in uh, Romans. Now I want you also to remember the parallel with Pharaoh. Pharaoh was raised up because God knew Pharaoh's character. Remember we saw in chapter 5 of Exodus Pharaoh's true character. He did not care about God. He did not care about mercy. He thought of himself as a god. And so we saw that by God raising Pharaoh up and judging the nation of Egypt because of their evil, then he was able to show his mercy upon the Israelites. Now let's look to, to Paul's day. So Israel has now taken the place of Egypt and Pharaoh. The, ru the rulers of Israel have rejected Christ. Why were the Israelites, if we're drawing the parallels, the Jewish leaders... That's what I'm speaking of, the Jewish leaders. Why were the Jewish leaders um, raised up during Christ's day? Because God knew the character they had, that they would reject Christ. So he raised them up so that even though that they would choose to do that evil act and kill Jesus, God would be able to show mercy upon all mankind, as Romans 11.32 says, to bring about mercy upon all because without the crucifixion, without the, the uh, covering of all sins, there would be no mercy for all, for our sins would still abide upon us. Okay? Now, Romans 9, 22. What if God, willing to show His wrath and to make His power known, endured with much long-suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had aforetime prepared unto glory. So, those that put their faith in Christ are no longer of the old creation. We are now of the new creation. We are in Christ. Okay, We are vessels of honor. So if God had judged Israel right at the moment that they killed Jesus, no one would be there to be able to tell the good news because... When Israel was judged in 70 A.D., I mean, they wiped out, uh, I believe it was a third of all the Jews. I believe it was a third. Um, and it's interesting, because why does it say with long-suffering that he is enduring the vessels of wrath? If you remember, if you look into the history of A.D. 70, when the Romans came and destroyed Jerusalem, the Christians all fled right before the destruction came. So enduring their, their, them, uh, their persecution and enduring their, their evil 
God was able to show mercy upon the Christians to allow them to escape and to show His judgment upon those who rejected their Messiah. And let's go to verse 24. Even us whom He hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. So how did the Jews... So Paul's showing that now God's mercy is upon the Gentiles and all who would believe is not focusing on Israel for the moment because they're rejecting God. Wrath has come upon them for doing so. And so, how did the Jews avoid God's wrath during the Exodus? How were they vessels of mercy and honor instead of vessels of wrath? Because they were covered, they were protected by the blood of the Lamb that they put across their doors. And the same here, those that put their faith in the blood of the Lamb of Jesus are protected from God's wrath. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And so I hope that this was uh, also edifying. I really do. And thank you all so much for listening. And uh, we'll try to get another video out soon on some next few verses. God bless, and y'all take care.